What's going on guys? Welcome to another episode working on this 1968, and I did say 1968, Dodge Charger with a Hellcat swap. So this is another episode, you guys. We have been working on this thing, made a ton of progress. And if you guys haven't seen all the episodes leading up to this point, go check them out. We originally didn't even have this thing running uh, when it got here. There was a bunch of electrical issues with it. Now it's to the point where you can jump in it hit the key, it'll start, it runs smooth and all that. We had a ton of issues with the thing running rough and everybody that's been following the build definitely knows the struggles that we were going through to get to this point. But right now what I wanna do is, first things first, we're gonna change the oil on it. Now that we got it running, we ended up draining all the old gas. We got some fresh gas in it. Since we don't really know any history on this thing, I'm gonna go ahead and put some fresh oil in it and also get a good filter on here. So this is the actual Hellcat spec filter if you guys do or don't know it literally says srt on the filter so right here where is it srt so i'm gonna get the actual proper filter on there and then we're gonna get some good synthetic oil in there because i have no idea what's going on on this thing so we're gonna dump it get some new fresh stuff in there other thing too in this episode i'm gonna check the transmission fluid so um we're not too sure i'm hoping like i said in the last video that they used eight speed fluid it's very specific some guys try to use other fluids and then end up burning up their transmission. So I want to double check that, check the level, make sure it actually has the correct fluid in it. And then I also picked up these. So I got some stainless steel band clamps. Um, not my preferred method necessarily, but just to get things hopefully sealed up a little bit better. This thing has literally tie wraps, zip ties, holding and securing our power steering return lines. So it was leaking before. It's got a brass uh, T on it but it literally just has tie wraps on it. So I'm hoping I can get in there and secure that. So we got a bunch of things that we're gonna tackle on this episode. So let's get this thing up in the air, drain the oil and get started. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and drain this. Like I mentioned to you guys before, there is some, you know, slight bit of oil residue coming off of this pan and it's probably gonna have to be taken out at some point. But for now, it's the least of our worries. Uh, it's mostly sealed up, but it will have to come off at some point to either get additional holes drilled in it so that it can be clamped properly or whatnot. But anyways, let's drain this oil. Or maybe it's just because the drain bolt is completely loose. Oh yeah, yeah, you guys, I swear this thing. All right, so drain this out. Okay, next up, while our oil is draining, I'm gonna go ahead and take this oil filter out of here, so. Sure, she's gonna start puking in a second. Maybe, maybe not. All right, there it is. So it's starting to drain off the side. So I'll let it drain for a bit into this pan before I decide to remove it and give myself an oil bath. Okay, and it looks like that T is gonna be best accessed from up above. We'll take off the cone filter and access it from up there. So, because down here it's not gonna be as easy. So it's right above this uh y pipe here all right so filters off i mean it's definitely a decent filter that was on it k&n but uh i'm hoping that i can fit the oem one on there because they have that adapter really close to the frame so we'll find out in a minute here okay so as suspected the oem filter will not fit on there so i'm gonna go ahead and pick up another one of these k&n's because it's really not a bad filter i just kind of wanted to go the oem route but it is what it is so i'm gonna go ahead and pick up one of these since it's a lot skinnier it's just taller instead of being wider for the filtration it's just taller which we have the room for lengthwise so anyways i'll pick that up and then uh, we can proceed okay next up let's go ahead and remove this intake arm and see what's going on with this t fitting Okay, I actually just had to remove the filter and there it is you guys. So hopefully you can see that. There's literally our power steering line is tie wrapped together. So that's a first for me seeing that. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'll cut their tie wraps off and I'm gonna get uh, a few of those clamps on there. It does have a brass T, it is gonna be the lower pressure line. So we'll see how it holds up. If it continues to leak, we're gonna have to revise this of course. So let me get some uh, real clamps on there. All right, again, you guys not making this up. So there's the three tie wraps removed. We've got three stainless clamps on there. So uh, we'll see how she holds up. Um, like, I don't even know. It's kind of hard to see. Hopefully it's 
you know, at least high pressure hose again. <laughs> it's kind of a mystery at this point, but we'll uh, work with what we got here. Like I said, it's not like we're going to go do any uh, high speed runs or anything with this thing. So we'll just be putting it around until uh, we kind of work through the issues. So anyways, that's one last thing off the list. I'm going to throw the filter back on. Funny part is they decided to put a band clamp there. I don't know why they didn't want to do it over here. Oh, well, we'll never know. Okay, so I've also been adding distilled water every time I've been starting it, which hasn't been that much just yet, but just to try to keep the system full, it continually keeps uh, burping the system. So we'll just keep putting it up to level here and until she uh, is happy. That's the other thing too, is I have no idea what coolant they have in this thing. It's like, hopefully there's coolant in it. <laughs> it's like kind of like a yellowish color but definitely not green and it's definitely not the purple that it's supposed to be. Let's actually check this tank. Let's see what color they got in here. I'm gonna put money on it that it's not purple. All right, so this one is very low as well. And that's gonna be the end of my distilled water, so it's at least better off. So I'll have to get some more. All right, so we went ahead and picked up one of these K&N filters. So we'll put this on. Also, the other thing that showed up is our amplifier. So we had to order an amplifier and uh, it came here from the wrecking yard. So we've got one of these. That means that we can get some sound working. Uh, just a small little item and feature and function on this thing, but we're gonna be working on getting a bunch of different stuff up and running. Also, you might notice in the background, I cut open the oil filter just to inspect it. Seems to be pretty good, so uh, that's a decent sign, but yeah, I wanted to inspect the filter so we can kind of get a general idea on uh, the health of this engine. Um, let's go ahead and put the new filter on though. Okay, so putting the new oil filter on was the easy part. Now I am trying to resolve another issue, you guys. So, um, initially, when uh, this car first came to me, this was on here, but it was rubbing here. Um, and I had to move some of these lines around. And essentially, I don't know if you guys can see, this thing is like this, but it was already rubbing. When this line was over here, it was already rubbing on this elbow. So it was only a matter of time before you, you know, activate or work the suspension before it would be chafing a hole through your oil line, which is always a, a good time. But what I'm trying to do now is this unit is a screw on piece. And I think the, only, like the best solution would be to change this hose completely. But I'm trying to see, cause if I try to put these mounts in, you can see it hits right here and the holes don't quite line up. So I'm trying to come up with some sort of solution for this, you guys, but uh, let's see what I come up with. That's the problem at the moment. All right, so we're gonna leave that one for now and uh, go up top, we'll figure that out later. But we are gonna go ahead and check the mystery in the transmission. So in order to check this as a very specific procedure and it has to be running, but I would at least wanna take the bolt out and see, hopefully make sure it's still the light green color. See if potentially, if anything will come out or if this thing is extremely empty, we'll find out in just a second here. Yeah, it's dark, but it looks like the correct color at least. It's the clear color, so... At least it's not red. That was my biggest fear. So, alright, well, it's definitely not empty. And it's definitely not red, by what I can tell. So, that's a good start. Let me just snug it up just so we can run it at least. I do want to, what I did want to do is once we get some new oil in it, is get it outside and heat cycle it. Um, that way I can kind of just, cause every time I start this thing, it's just like spitting out so much fuel that's stuck in the exhaust system. So I want to get outside. That way we can uh, let it run for a bit, make sure the fans come on, check the coolant temps, uh, you know, check the coolant levels all that good stuff and then we can come in and actually uh, check the transmission fluid level. Okay, car's back on the ground. Let's get some oil back in. Okay, so we've got oil in it. So I'm gonna have to fire it up and double check the oil level, but it's got plenty of it in it for now. And uh, I'm gonna wait to start up the choke machine. I mean, smoke machine. I mean, 68 charger. 
<laughs> because I need to get this thing outside running and just clear this thing out. Um, but what I am going to do is I want to put it back up. I did forget that I wanted to put just an eyeball alignment on it. That way, when I drive it out and drive it back in, I'm not like fighting the thing the whole time. So let me throw it back up there and uh, we'll throw a few cranks on the tie rods and see if we can get it at least looking a little better. All right, so I threw our eyeball alignment on it and now this wheel is a lot more straight, but at the same time, it does have a tendency, if you guys have ever adjusted stuff like this, it'll kind of kick the other side out. It doesn't necessarily only move this one. You know, sometimes when you're pushing over here, it's actually pushing the rack that way, but it looks half decent from here. I don't know if you guys can see it, but I had to go quite a bit on that tie rod to uh, even get it to kind of look somewhat normal, but this thing has a boatload of camber on it, so. Definitely gonna need a proper alignment, but at least this should get it uh, rolling somewhat straight. So I'm just gonna put the uh, jam nut on there just so it doesn't move uh, around, just with our little bit of moving this thing around somewhat. And um, we'll put this thing back down. All right, next up, we're gonna install the amp, do a bit of programming, and then also install a couple factory speakers. Uh, always upgrade them later, but at least something that's plug and play for now. There is two aftermarket speakers that are in the rear deck lid there that I have ran the factory wiring to. I just haven't uh, fully finished that wiring. So first things first, install the amp, program it, install the factory speakers, the ones that go to the dash, and we'll see if we have any sound out of this thing, and then uh, we'll move on from there. Okay, so we've got the amplifier connected. I've got a speaker here connected, another speaker over there, and part in the digging, but I've got my phone synced to the head unit, and it's supposed to be playing a song. Oh, you can see there we got the volume cranked and no sound, so now I gotta program some stuff. Okay, so I've plugged in the amplifier, I've programmed the amplifier, it, uh, the settings on the vehicle, like I said, this whole thing is a mishmash of modules and wiring harnesses, so it was set to not have an amplifier, but this, dashboard wiring harness does have amplifier wiring so I turned it on and I'm still not just able to communicate to the amplifier so the amplifier is a module but I'm gonna go ahead and double check that we're getting power to it and then maybe we'll go chasing some fuses because I should be able to connect to it but we'll see what's next so pardon the dinging but I kind of have to do that to uh, have the system on so you can see here we've got power to the amp So there's the other power wire. So we got power, let's uh, keep troubleshooting. All right, so good news and bad news. Good news is I've got the stereo system working after doing some programming, but bad news is the amplifier that I got from eBay, from Salvage Yard, she is no good. I had to steal the amp from my Dakota to double check my sanity to make sure that um, it was actually the amp. And like I said, you can see all the junkyard writing on here, but. I had to take apart the Helcota and rob the one out of there just to double check that uh, my work was correct, and it was. So, fortunately, this is going to have to go back and get returned to eBay, but we will have to get another one of these guys. So, just because copyright stuff, I won't uh, play it for too long, but you hear. Again, we just have these tiny little speakers here, but at least you can see that we've got, and here's the stereo knob, like everything works, right? So that works, but uh, what I'm gonna do as well is the two speakers that are in the deck lids, I'm gonna tie those in just so we can get a little bit better sound so I can uh, show you guys. Maybe I'll put on some copyright free music for you guys. All right, so unfortunately, I just swapped back the one that we bought off eBay and uh, you can see there the writing on it. Does not work, we got no sound coming out. So you can see there, there's a volume going up and down. We got nada. But let me, uh, I connected the rear speakers, so I'll swap back my amp for a second just so you guys can hear it, and then we'll move on to something else. All right, so we've got a few speakers working. At least we've got the back ones running. And the other one's hiding under the dash, but you get the idea. Probably have to mess with the EQ and all that stuff, you guys, but at least we've got sound in here. So um, the other thing too is the speakers that are back there are just like some crappy Kenwood, like six by nines that somebody threw back there. So um, yeah, it is what it is. But anyways, that works. Next thing. 
All right, so next up, uh, I want to mess with the taillights. So the taillights, and the uh, reason why I'm moving to taillights, I do want to start this thing, but the battery is uh, not in the greatest of shape. So um, when this thing arrived, it was like completely just nothing in it. So it was completely dead, and then I had to put on a charger. So it's, it's in need of a battery. So right now I have it on a trickle charger, and it's like not being too too happy so I can't start it right now so I might as well mess with some other stuff while it's uh, continuing to charge but um, a few things to consider on the taillights so the centerpiece normally goes through the trunk and since we have a charger harness all the plugs are different um, right now I'll show you guys nothing works but since this doesn't technically go through the trunk anymore I've rerouted the harness that would go into the actual trunk on the original you know 2015 and up charger and i have it down here but the problem is the plug is different so i'm gonna have to order a different plug for some reason the charger plug looks like this and the challenger plug looks like that so i have to order a different plug to be able to plug into here um as for the tail lights you guys are gonna laugh uh, i'm gonna have to re reprogram stuff but with that aside, you guys gotta remember, Charger and Challenger are different. Somebody has taken the plug from a Challenger and they've put it onto here, but the taillights don't work. I'll plug it in to show you. But I already looked at the pinout. Whoever did it, not that we're surprised at this point, but whoever did it completely put everything in the wrong spot and more specifically, the ground wire isn't in the right position. So if you don't have the ground wire right, nothing is gonna work, which is what we have. And I already looked and I'm pretty sure that's most of our problems. So. I'll show you guys just so you guys don't think I'm uh, you know playing games here but I looked at it and this is this is a type of thing you guys where it's more just my knowledge and being familiar with the systems that I'm able to identify issues like this and just knock them out real quick versus somebody you know scratching their head for hours or days trying to figure out why these taillights don't work I will still have to do programming but it helps to at least have the wiring correctly if you don't have the wiring correctly and you don't know what the hell you're doing which is what we're seeing here then nothing's gonna work so let me show you guys I'll demonstrate this one's plugged in as well if you guys will be able to see it but it's plugged in um, and it's just nothing works so I'll turn on the running lights so I'll turn on the four ways and yeah we got nothing all right so we still have to mount all this stuff but I'll turn on running lights so running lights are on you can see they're on the dash the SRT logos lit up you guys see any running lights I don't see any running lights. I will have to plug this one in, but it doesn't make a difference. Yeah, so there. That's plugged in. So there you go. It's plugged in. No running lights. I'll turn on the four ways for you guys. Again, running lights are still on. We'll hit the fours. Okay, there. Four ways. Nothing. Now with John's magic, let me repin. This connector here, so I'm gonna pull this out. Let me put these where the wires are actually supposed to be, and uh, I'm willing to bet that we'll have some taillights. Okay, so fix the wiring, and bam, you guys, don't doubt me. So I haven't done that one yet, but let's see if the turn signal works. Obviously the running light works. So I just turned that on quickly. And again, turn it off. You can probably see a reflection. So she goes off. There, it's on. Let's hit the four ways to see what we got. Hey, that's what I'm talking about. So there we go. It uh, it helps when you know what you're doing, you guys. What can I say? At this point, yeah, it is what it is. Anyways, let me uh, rewire this one. That way we get one more taillight working. All right, boys. So there you go. We've got running lights and then we've got the turn signals working as well. So you can see there. So I just got the four ways on. And this one I'm going to have to order the correct plug for so that I can get this one working. But we're uh, well underway. It does look really funny without having that... Uh, illuminated in the same sequence so doesn't it but anyways that one's done it doesn't have a there's no turn signal stock so somebody snapped it clean off so and you can't 
order just this piece you have to order the whole uh this whole steering column is its own module let me turn off this TikTok noise is its own module so you have to order the whole thing you can't just order this one piece so um we're gonna go ahead and uh get one of those in there that way we have a turnstock because we got nothing <laughs> okay and since we're on a roll in the trunk area you guys check this one out i just wired up and programmed <laughs> and the lights come on too i gotta mount them and stuff but i was just cleaning up some wiring and decided to get some extra stuff working so there we go okay so this battery is pretty much toast you guys i left it uh charging overnight and it's still not 100 percent so gonna need a new battery so if she cranks a little slow you guys know why <laughs> But I'm gonna go ahead, move the Viper out of the way. Let's fire this thing up, move it outside, and then uh, we will let it run in heat cycle and uh, just keep an eye on the fluids. We'll see what happens. See if we can hopefully make it that far, fingers crossed. All right, so the car got up to temperature and the fan did turn on, but it was kind of getting a little warm, so I'm gonna bleed the coolant out of this bleed screw right here. Hopefully it's just an air pocket. If not, it might be a actual uh, thermostat that we have to change. So let's see what we can do here. Let's see if we can kind of burp the system here and uh, go from there. All right, that should do it. Quite a bit of air pocket in the front there. All right, so let's see what she does now. This thing sounds healthy now, you guys. So we're almost at the midway mark. Again, we got to do a bunch of programming still on this thing, but it has definitely cleared itself out. It sounds a lot better than it ever has. She's uh, definitely coming around on us. So let's see if the fans kick on. Before the fan came on, but it was starting to, the temp was starting to creep a little bit too much. So if we go over here, where is it? Coolant temp, we're at 212. Before it was getting up to like almost 230 or something. So thermostat was not opening. Let's see how she does now. Okay, I think thermostat's opening because this upper radiator hose is getting pretty warm. The lower feels warm. Before they were kind of just meh. Let's see what our temps are doing. Yeah, we're sticking around 213, which is better. 
Okay, so coolant's fully circulating. Now she's sitting happy at 203. Fan comes on. I gotta add some more coolant now that the thermostat finally opened, but everything's running mint. All right, so since everybody keeps giving me heck for this thing being covered in dust and fingerprints all over it, and this is exactly the way I've received it, I'm gonna go ahead, since I don't really have to push it anymore, or nobody has to push it, hopefully, I'm gonna go ahead and wash it so that I can finally not have to see all the comments about fingerprints and all that nonsense. So I've been putting fender covers on it, as you can see, but for some reason, every video I post of this, I always get fingerprint comments. So anyways, let me wash this thing down. All right, there we go. So she's all cleaned off. I'm gonna put it back in the shop so I can wipe it down. That way it doesn't get a bunch of sunspots on it and then she will be clean. All right, you guys, so the car is clean and dry and now nobody can give me heck for fingerprints on this. Unless there's some fingerprints from somebody that was eating a buttermilk biscuit that I could not get the fingerprints off before. Any new fingerprints that you're gonna see on this can be claimed as mine. So I don't think you guys are gonna be seeing all those fingerprints anymore. Check this out though. Remember the amp that didn't work like off eBay? They actually sent me a refund, which is uh, kind of a relief because I didn't want to get into a huge issue with that. But I decided to crack it open after they, uh, you know, essentially told me I don't have to send it back. Check out inside you guys. So yeah, when you buy stuff off eBay, just watch out because you can see this thing is all corroded and then literally it like caught on fire essentially. Like check that out. So yeah, this unit is toast. I have to get another amplifier and then we can get this thing back in order. So that's gonna be a wrap on this episode for you guys. So make sure if you guys are enjoying this content, make sure you hit the subscribe button and turn on that bell so you're notified of when I post a new video. We've got a lot more still to do on this. If you're wondering what else we gotta do, I think on the next episode, what I'm gonna start to tackle is all the lights that are on the dash right now. So. I gotta make the system a little more happy and actually I'll show you guys quickly that it does move under its own power. I'm sure some people are probably interested in that. So here we go, accessory, run, everything comes up. Put our foot on the brake, she starts up. And then we can go ahead, I can put it in drive. We can go for a drive. I know everybody wants to know if it works, so here you go. Brakes are a little sketch in my opinion. I don't know that everything was specced out properly for the way it is, but yeah. She runs, she drives, put in reverse. She goes backwards, neutral. She goes forwards, so there you go. Everything works, and then of course, hit the run button, she turns off. So yeah, probably what I'm gonna do next on this thing is get all the system happy so that all the electronics is more happy inside. And then we still got a bunch of stuff. We still gotta figure out all the headlight stuff. None of the headlights right now work. Uh, they don't turn on, they don't do anything. All that has to be wired in. And we are gonna have to do a bunch of stuff, like I said, on the electrical. So that, power door locks, windows, none of that stuff works. It would be nice if I could put the windows up and down, but uh, all that wiring is just dangling there. So because um, it would be nice when you're moving it around at least so you can kind of stick your head out and when you're moving it around but that is not the case so anyways thanks for watching give it a thumbs up comment down below what you guys think of the progress so far this thing has come leaps and bounds it's been sitting for a couple years and now finally it is able to be a car that actually moves and works a long ways to go but it's getting there and almost there so thanks for watching see you on the next one